How you doing? Back at it. NHL's going. Everything's awesome in the world when we can watch hockey. Had a great World Junior. Now we got the NHL. Every game, every night, outstanding. And with that as a concept, I want to talk about anchoring. And anchoring is a concept I learned from Evan Curilo, and it's a great concept that Carey Price uses to make himself elite. We're going to really drill down into that so you can see what it means. As well, we're going to get Cole and Sprance on the ice and work a little bit on stick involvement and three key features of good stick rebound control. We'll break that down for you in detail. As well, for all you goalie coaches out there, we're going to finish with a nice segment on how you can become a better goalie coach and listen to Sprance and I shoot the breeze as we talk about some of the goofy stuff we've seen and some of the great stuff we've seen with great goalie coaches. Let's get going. What is anchoring? Anchoring is a very simple concept. It means you are anchored to the ice or you're anchored to the post. Now there's times when you can't be anchored on the post, obviously. And there's times when you can't be anchored on your edges, obviously. When you're in a butterfly, you have no edge contact with the ice. So that's an example of a time that you're gonna to need to use when you're not anchored. But the best goalies are anchored more often than they're not. So let's take a, an example. If you're a slide happy goalie that's moving and sliding around in your butterfly all the time, you're not anchored. It has its place in the game, but it needs to be when you need it. You can't be sliding around. You can't be flopping around on your butt, on your belly and unanchored because that's not going to be good goaltending. And that's why Carey Price is elite. If you look at some of these photos here, you can see he's on his edges a great percentage of the time. He's on the post in a proper anchor a great percentage of the time. And the key tenant with him and with you as a goalie should be you release your anchor the latest possible moment. So just before the puck's about to arrive, you can release your edges and drive down to a butterfly, um, perhaps on a tight centering pass when you're using the RVH and you're anchored to the post. You detach off that anchor to slide out to push to jam them up. So you lose your anchor in the moment just before you make a save. If you're not in that type of a mindset, you're going to find yourself getting scored on a lot. So use the concept of anchoring in your game. Watch some video of you playing and see what percentage of time you're actually anchored in control and poise and great positioning. Look at the times when you're scrambling and battling, shimming around on your knees without edges anchored, or you're detached from the post floating around. The best goalies with the most poise, the most composure, and the most positional control spend the majority of their time anchored in control. One other element that goes into this, if you're sliding and the puck is en route, and there's times that happens, but if you're sliding and the puck is en route, your head is moving in space. You're not anchored. That is a very difficult projectile to identify, to watch, to see it all the way in. There's going to be times when you need it, but the more often you're anchored, your head is quiet in space and you can see the puck better. So as a goal, let's do this. Look at your game, Look at your approach and see if there's times and places where you can be more mindful about being anchored so perhaps you can have a great career like that Carey Price fella right there. What number do you want to wear? Number 69, it's hilarious! Is that never taken? Okay, here we go, same thing, walk or save. Don't over rotate there, right? Because he's on the poor angle over there, the more you rotate that blocker, the more it's going back towards the end boards. End boards means it's coming back out, okay? Less rotation means go to the corner more, okay?
Good. Last one. some stuff with like defense, like goalie D transitions, them dumping in, you pass into the defenseman. They worked on point shots all practice. <laughs> all practice, point shots, skating and point shots. Smart. 50 minutes. Smart. <laughs> all right. I've been coaching goalies for 30 years, Sprouts 20. We've been around. We've seen a lot of stuff. We've seen a lot of great goalie coaches and we see some that not so much. We see it online because it's such an easy medium for people to get information out there. And we wanted to talk a little bit and give you some advice on how you can become a better goalie coach. Am I a perfect goalie coach? No. Am he a perfect goalie coach? No. We're all continual, continually learning. We're trying to get better all the time. And as a young goalie coach, you should be doing the same thing. So on the topic of being a good goalie coach, let's get started. What are some things you see young goalie coaches doing that aren't going to be effective as a goalie coach and not get the results they want? One of my biggest pet peeves right now is coaches that post a ton of content on Instagram where it looks like in an hour long lesson, they're posting 20 minutes of video. Right. Like what are the parents paying for there? What are people paying for? Like it, it, if, if you're posting that much content on Instagram, like how much are you actually teaching them? Like take, put your phone away, right. put your camera away and actually do some coaching on the ACE instead of worrying about how many followers you got on Instagram. The other big thing I see right now is everybody trying to do the big trendy cool stuff. Right. Right. And it, it's flavor of the month. Exactly. And, and some of the stuff is going to work and some of the stuff's great, but you don't need to spend a ton of time on it. So for aspiring goalie coaches out there, younger goalie coaches, stick to the basics, teach them technique fundamentals over everything else and get to that other stuff as it becomes uh, applicable to them at certain ages and don't focus on it for 90% of your lessons. You don't have to be doing RVH every single practice for half the practice. Right. They don't have to be amazing at it. It's, it's one of those things, it's a skill. You gotta uh, work on all the skills equally and make sure that you're getting a good, um, a good variety of everything in there and making sure they're touching on all the topics and not just the cool thing right now. Right, and I think further to that is sometimes young goalies that are coaches now end up mimicking the stuff they learned from their goalie coach. Sprantz grew up around me and I'm sure a lot of the stuff he says to the kids are very similar. But as a school teacher, he's a school teacher, the one thing we know is you gotta target your verbiage, your words, to the level of the student. Now, I see on Instagram, I see on YouTube, I see coaches directly that when they're talking to young athletes, they try to use big words. Uh, sequential derotation, backside, like what are some other big words that you hear coaches using nowadays? They're like head trajectory. Um, they say the word tracking all the time, which basically just means watching the puck intently and the patterns that it, so I think at some level, coaches try to instill confidence in what they know and their credibility by trying to sound smarter. Sometimes the, the easiest word you can use is the better word. So don't try to blow your goalies out of the way by using uh, big words, simple, descriptions, simple words is always better. I, I agree. I agree. Even some of the older athletes might not understand what you're saying, but they don't want to seem dumb. So they'll sit there and smile and nod and go, okay, coach. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'll try that. And I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about, what, what you're meaning. I'll do better at my lateral releases and my post integration. So another thing with goalie coaches is I think there's a lot of great goalie coaches out there. And I think they can't just learn from me. They can't just learn from you. They can learn from other people. So another piece of advice I would give is don't be that goalie coach that's shy about letting your kid work with other coaches. They're not gonna screw them up, and you don't wanna be going to a million goalie coaches in one year, but don't be possessive of your athlete. You're not the one that put them in junior. You're not the one that put them in the NHL. They're the one that did it, and they've had lots of influences. Our role is to be a shepherd and to manage them along. It's not about us. Now, obviously, in a business, I'm gonna mention Eddie Belfour. Obviously, in a business, I'm gonna mention the bazillion kids I've coached that went to the NHL college in division one. That's what I do. It's, I get the sales part of it, but when you're on the ice talking to an athlete, they don't need to know who you've coached and all that other stuff. In fact, I had a kid the other day on the ice. I don't want to mention him by name, but I asked him a question. What he thought about how Eddie Belfour used to handle the puck. He didn't know who Eddie Belfour was. What? Not surprising these days. Not surprising. So talking about, goalie coaching to what role can a goalie coach play in his relationship with the head coach for his athletes 
um, you know, sort of advocating on their behalf? Or what role does a goalie coach have to be that liaison between the goalies, the parents, and the coaches? I think it goes both ways. It doesn't just go between um, the goalie and the coach and relaying information to him and helping him out with the coach. I think it goes the other way too. You can help the goalie out by relaying information from the coach that can come across better. Because the coach could say something that comes across and, and if – if your goalie heard it, it would probably really destroy their confidence. Hurt, hurt his feelings. Yeah, hurt their feelings a little bit, destroy their confidence, and and it wouldn't be great for them, right? So if we can make that message come across in a better way, filter, a more constructive filter, yeah. way, a teaching way, right. as opposed to being absolutely just, just saying they're terrible at something. Mix a save and can't stop the puck. Correct. We can we can help them along the way and, and make sure that they're getting the point of what the coach actually wants them to do, right. and we can give it to them properly. And vice versa with the coach. If the goalie is, is, is not understanding or doing something or not liking the way the coach is saying something, we can direct the coach in the right direction as well and saying, well, here, this is the way that you should be treating the goalie in this situation instead of doing this and, and showing them how they can, they can, um, how they can help their goalies in a game. Even if you have to pull them or if you have to, um, if they have to go in halfway through a game, how you can stoke their confidence to get them ready to go in. There's lots of things that you can tell coaches that can help them deal with these coach or these goalies a little better and, and make sure that they don't, uh, hurt their egos. Right. And I think there's an, another topic there with the ego. So as a goalie coach, the kids love us. The parents keep telling us how awesome we are. He loves working with you. He's, don't get your head swollen up thinking that you become an amazing goalie coach because everybody's telling you how great you are. That's the nature of the business. Parents and goalies are happy that you're actually working with them and giving them some help. At the end of the day, it's not about us as goalie coaches. And we need to learn from other goalie coaches. And don't think at any point in this journey that you've got it figured out. I still learn every day. I learn from smarter goalie coaches than, than myself, but I have a good critical filter. I always make it past the smell test. There's something that they're talking about, a technical thing like RVHing on a point shot, for instance, or a guy 40 feet away and you're in the RVH. You have to be a goalie coach with some discernment. Understand, is this gonna help? Where can it be used? Why shouldn't it be used? And all those other questions. So I think to summarize, as a goalie coach, it's not about us. We're continually gonna get better. And we're going to welcome other athletes, or our athletes going to other goalie coaches. One of the last points I'd like to make too is that it's not all about hockey either. You can be a good coach to that individual in life lessons as well. And one of the greatest compliments that I get as a goalie coach is we've loved working with you over these past few years. And it's not just about the, the goalie that you've made my son or daughter. It's about the um, intangibles that you've instilled them as a human being as well to be a good person and to help other people out and, and to work with everybody and, and not just on ice performance, but your off ice performance as well. Right. We're here to make citizens, great human beings, grow them, and once in a while, they turn into great athletes. So that should be your mindset. You're not trying to make NHLers. You're making citizens.